I am a big fan of October Babies. Mm -hmm. I was born on um, October 12th, 1979. So there real close yeah. um, to a date that's going to be special to you for the rest of your life. Uh, Ella Rose yeah. uh, was born on October 13th, 2022. I've gotten pictures of you just texting, checking on you throughout the season. It's just mm -hmm. you being in a happy place no matter what was going on because you had that purpose now of being a father. What have these months with your baby meant to you? Honestly, it's been it's been incredible. You know, obviously during the season, there's a lot going on. And uh, it's just like another part of the journey, you know, having having a child, like the bye week was lined up perfectly, you know, luckily. But just being able to, you know, have to come home. I'm gone for 14 hours a day of football and then I got to be a dad. And just dealing with all that and learning how to, you know, take care of my family, you know, be there, you know, for my daughter, doing a little heavy lifting, you know, every day. And uh, I think that's just, you know, a testament to, to Rachel being there, taking care of her um, and just us coming together closer because it's not easy. You know, you yeah. know how it is. It's it's an everyday, you know, everyday process. So, yeah, you know, that was a, a big challenge, but it's been it's been incredible. You know, I've been there every day with their husbands. If you ever need any notes, we all are uh, girl dads. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. this guy. We out here grinding, right? We working our butts off. This guy, he leaves. He goes to his daddy-daughter dance. Come right back. And he comes back to chop it up with you. So personal note, this is the, <laughs> the, the, the girl that, dad goat right here. So, <laughs> the sacrifice, sacrifice it takes for the babies. Yeah. yeah. Man, you sure. you wild. That's why I think they're trying to keep us apart, because I'm I'm a little wild, a little bit too, Max. <laughs> But it's funny that Fred brings up the, the girl that thing because my daughter, and I'm sure your daughter, like they love you to death. Oh, yeah. I do not want my daughter to marry a guy like me. No. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Have you thought about that? Because my daughter, she just turned 10. Have you thought about that? Like, she's going to love me to death, know me, but I don't yeah. want her to marry me. No. I, yeah, see, at the end of the day, like, that's something I always thought about. You know, what is it going to be like when my daughter brings somebody to the house? She's only four months, so I haven't really <laughs> yeah. thought about, you know, I haven't gotten that far, but... Yeah, you know, I feel like God works in mysterious ways and I feel like guys like us, you know, we have we have daughters for a reason. It changes our perspective. So that's kind of the way I looked at it because when I found out Rachel was pregnant, I was like, I'm having a boy. Like I was trying to manifest <laughs> that I'm doing it. And Rachel was like, it's a girl. And I kind of like deep down, I kind of like knew it was going to be like that. So mm -hmm. I feel like things work out for a reason. And, you know, it's definitely opened my eyes a lot for sure. Hey, Max, you said before that you put Rachel through hell. How much, in your journey, how much credit do you give her for, now that she's the mom, love mm -hmm. of your life, how much credit do you give her for the, your success? A ton. I was just having this conversation a couple days ago. You know, we obviously, we've had a million ups and downs and, you know, went through it all. She went through my addiction. She was there through everything. You know, it's funny. I give her a ton of credit because when I first met her, like, I was wild as hell in college, just partying and doing my thing. And um, she helped changed my direction of my, you know, career and my future. You know, she helped me. She was cooking me meals and bringing them to me in the morning so I could have meal prep and shit like that when I, I didn't even have the money to make, you know, make mm -hmm. food. So she was just trying to help me. And then, you know, she was two years older. So once she graduated, I was still at Eastern and she decided, you know, she made the sacrifice for me to come, stay with me and help me out. And um, she was working full time and basically, you know, helping pay bills yeah, take and care of you. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have shit. So we were sleeping on a damn mattress on the floor. Like that's when we first met. So yeah, I, we, we've been through it all together and uh, I appreciate, you know, everything she brings to the table. She's, she's a keeper for sure. She has a quote that she felt like she was screaming down a dark hallway with you mm -hmm. and people were just telling her to deal with it. Yeah. And I'm sure that has to be a very difficult place to be in, but you speaking about where you guys started and now you're you're drafted and you runner up to the rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. Everything from the outside, the way you play the game, uh, the intensity in which you approach it, the discipline you have when it comes to doing your job on the field, it makes people think, well, this young man has everything in order. Mm -hmm. You kind of alluded to what it's like to have a 14 hour work day and then come home and be a father. Yeah. Where you were burning the candles at different ends in your rookie season. How are you able to keep everything together, bro, living like that at night and then putting out that sort of output on the field? 
Yeah, you know, uh, honestly, I don't know how the hell I did it. <laughs> to yeah, be like, honest, looking back now, like, I have such a wild, crazy routine. And I'm, you know, from, from even a teammate's perspective and coaches, they're like, go home. Like, I'm already training right now. I'm already two weeks into training. So, like, I'm so obsessed with that, like, just being the best player I can be and perfecting what I do. So that that shit isn't that shit isn't hard to me because I know what hard is. Like, hard is waking up staying out all night hung the fuck over and struggling to get out of bed and then trying to operate on a daily basis in a in a football building and you know what i mean it's just like it was impossible like i was literally just running on fumes all the time so right. now like my routine is so tightly wound that it's just I, I don't know any other way and uh you know looking back like i really i don't know how i got through it but i did i found a way i was still able to produce but deep down i knew like I wasn't the best I could be and I knew it wasn't gonna last so it just it got to a point where it was like all right I'm either gonna keep doing this shit and be you know a, a cool story and you know Max made it from Eastern or I can go and be the best of what I do in the world and that's what I feel like I'm doing right now and I still got work to do but um, that's my goal you know I want to be the best um, in, in the world and that's that's why I push myself the way I do I, I 